Welcome to HSBC Build and Grow, a series that focuses on managing finance for business continuity. As financial stakes center stage in business continuity conversations, your story together with HSBC is proud to present this series, featuring some of the finest minds in the ecosystem to help businesses leverage the financial ingenuity, perspective, and insights from these experts to power their own journey their own continent. You tell us from your lens, what is Milk Basket and what's the story you're building there? My lens, my perspective on Milk Basket uh, is something that the world has not seen before. Uh, and I think there's something that uh, possibly they might not ever see again uh, in terms of how unique we are and how we feel unique we are. And I'll, I'll tell you why I say that because yeah. We, uh, when we started, we were the world's first in many things that we did, uh, from uh, model technology, supply chain delivery, uh, and uh, you know how we treat customer in its entirety. Uh, and why I say that you will not see any anyone like this again is because the way we have developed it, it's very very unique. And now the DNA of the organization has become such that you just just cannot go and replicate the DNA. You can replicate the model. But the way we would treat a customer, the way we would answer the query, the way we would look at the supply chain, the way we, uh, you know, do initiative or uh, send them a rose or send them a cake. That's who we are. And that's how our customers know us. So that's why uh, unique, uh, unique child cannot be copied. Unique. Data. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. now that I have you here and I think we are speaking for the first time, I want to understand from you. Why did you decide to start Milk Basket? Milk basket was a problem to a solution on a daily basis, uh, hmm. frankly speaking. Uh, and it was also uh, an attempt to say that can something be done in the grocery world. When we started in 2015, we had multiple players playing around. Uh, many of them are still there. Uh, sorry, a few of them are still there. Many of them have, have vanished. Uh, and they were in all formats. I think every city had two or three. So maybe in India, there were 200, 250 grocery startups, if you, if you look at it. Uh, when we looked at the model, we said that while there are two distinct models, one is what we call online hypermart, uh, and you know all the players who are in that mm. uh, internationally, globally, Indian. Uh, and we have the second, which was the the instant delivery model that was picking up uh, very mm. hot, fourteen and fifteen, lot of funding coming in, and it started with uh, with the US uh, with. Uh, uh, Instacart taking the lead and then model being replicated across the world. Uh, we said that uh, uh, there might be a possibility of a third model here. And why that third model is because uh, my needs are not met by either of the two, uh, either by design or by uh, two things. So either by design because customer need is not met or either because uh, I, if I meet this need, I become unsustainable. So. Uh, I think they are the two basic pillars of a business from that perspective. So, so while instant is fulfilling my need, uh, it's not making money. So my need needs to be fulfilled, but the business has to make money so that it can grow and become sustainable. Hmm. Uh, so that's why Milk Basket was born as a unique model to say that a unique supply chain has to be created, uh, which actually doesn't come in our name. Uh, we are a newspaper supply chain, actually. Uh, we are not a milk supply chain, but we are a newspaper supply chain. Like a newspaper gets published at midnight and gets to you at seven o'clock. Uh, we thought we also would do the same thing. So we take orders till midnight and deliver all your groceries before seven o'clock in the morning. Every wow. And wow. then things like, uh, you know, why should you force a customer to put 100, 200, 500 worth of items in your basket? So we say, you want a parlegee for five rupees, we'll give you a parlegee and we will not charge anything for you because when you go to a shop, does the shopkeeper ask you, uh, madam, no, unless you buy 200, I'll not sell you a 20 rupee packet. They will never say that. So why, why you have the right to say that when you're doing it online? I found it very counterintuitive from a customer perspective. And then we said, if we are creating a five rupee delivery model, can the model make sense or not? And that's how backwards we looked at it. And we said, yes, there is a possibility we can look at. And uh, we had a unit economic positive cluster in for six months. And then we said, now we can scale. So, you know, that's what I want to ask you. I think this is one 
I think this is something that we need to celebrate as a country. And now I wouldn't say just as a country, but across the world. Now, you know what you said, within six months, you had a cluster which was unit economics positive. I want again to go back to this, that, you know, how core was it for you from day one to build a sustainable model? And also, why do you think that you are one of the key uh, players who is surviving and growing? While there were so many, if you remember, in the 2015 vintage, and there were so many who got so much of funding, but they didn't survive. Yeah, so uh, see, as I said, Shraddha, the question is, why do you start? And that's what I answered early on. Uh, you can create any model to serve any need of a customer. You know, I, I'm a customer of many brands and I would like to have Moon and I would not like to pay anything for the Moon. <laughs> yeah. Right? A customer. And let's understand that's a customer. Now the question for a business is, okay, I'm fulfilling this demand and this is what I'm predicting. Can I make money while fulfilling that demand? So you can create any business, any startup and keep fulfilling the demand. But if you can't make money in the process, I think you are not doing fiduciary duty to yourself, to your employees or to your investors. Yeah. And someday you go IPO, then obviously you will, you will never reach there. Or if you, even if you reach there, it's an injustice to the entire ecosystem. We call it Ponzi, right? Where, uh, where things happen because nobody's behind it. It's just building on some fluff. Uh, so that's the basic criteria. And if, because that was the basic criteria, that was very important. Uh, I think that's interlinked. If it's not sustainable, you can't make money at a small level. And you can only make money when you are uh, working in a nation. And after you have raised $300 million or a billion dollar, that means, uh, means if you have to make money, uh, and this is retail, right? Uh, a mom and pop shop in 500 square feet in a, in a small coca makes money. Can you not make money? Why can't you make money? If that person can make money, you have to make money. If you can't figure it out, then you should not be in the business. Yeah. I cannot withdraw my salary from one coca, obviously. And for my salary, you need to have that, you know, big scale and everything and technology and AI and ML and blah, blah. But let's make sure that coca is sustainable, right? That one unit makes money and is positive. If you can't do that, there is no dream of making you any money. Yeah. I think, yeah, that was the base criteria. And that's why we said for six months, we have to prove it. And after we did that, then we approached for our first round of funding because till then there was no point. So wow. it was interrelated. Yeah. And you have a subscription model, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we do have a subscription model, though uh, the debate with me and typically when I'm having with anyone is, what do you actually mean by subscription? Uh, because uh, depending on how you define subscription, the answer is yes and no. Okay. So tell us, tell us, what do you mean by subscription? Because you so, did it in 2015, whatever you did, you yeah. did it in 2015 before subscription as a word also became part of our startup lexicon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So see, uh, 2015, we were not a subscription model. Uh, hmm. Actually, we launched our subscription in November last year. So okay. for the first five years, we were not a subscription model. And what is a subscription model? Subscription model is where you take a commitment from a customer in advance for uh, the, the amount and the quantity. Amount in terms of what are you gonna pay me and quantity in terms of what I'm going to deliver to you. Uh, we have not done that. So this is, this is something to say, hey, can you bring fresh flowers to my office every alternate day? And this is your monthly contract. Right now, this is a fixed quantity. Uh, there would be a bouquet of flower and there would be a subscription price for that. And a friend of mine is running a startup in London, exactly doing that. Uh, uh, so subscription is based on that two liters of milk every day for 30 days. And that cost you 1200 rupees, pay me 1200 rupees. I'll supply to you that every day. That's a subscription model. So uh, as milk basket, we have never done that. Uh, we are what we what I call a, an on-demand service, a grocery player, with a possibility to create a recurring order. Mm. So you don't need to put uh, so so milk basket is a very unique way. The way we have approached is the recurring order that you create on milk basket is for life. As long as you have money in the account, it will come. So for example, you can say I want popcorn every Friday because I watch movies and I have customers who have done that. 
Now, till you have money in your account, you will get a popcorn every Friday for the rest of your life. But if your money, money finishes, then the quantity finishes. So I've not taken a quantity promise. All I have say, taken is a pattern of your buying. And then I have, uh, you know, put it in the technology to enable to deliver it on a, uh, at a frequency that you decide. So no upfront payments and stuff like that. To, uh, and what, when I said money in the account, that's another thing that we did was to say to enable this and to enable hassle-free buying. Uh, and this was, uh, again, a very core ground knowledge that wherever you do frequent transactions, you end up opening a khata. Right? Uh, this is with your mom and pop shop. This is with your sabji yes. uh, BBG kal de denge. Aaj utha lena. Ya, so rupay hai, chalo, koi baat nahi. You know, so there is a transaction and that trust happens. And uh, with, an on, with an online world, you don't do that. There is no ongoing transaction. So we said we want hassle-free transactions. And uh, what if I take commercial uh, transactions from a physical transaction, which means every time I'm buying a, a biscuit or a milk or a bread or an egg or a cornflake, I don't have to pay money. Yeah. What we call frictionless buying. Yeah. Day one, we are that. And within that, we are a prepaid model, which means you can put 100, 500, 1000, 2000 rupees, whatever you want. You are Shraddha. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and you put it and once you put that money you can use that money to buy milk on a daily basis or you can spend that entire wallet in one day or if you don't want anything you can tell us and we'll put that money back to you so no no commitments it's a deposit that you have given very very interesting very actually very interesting so basically for i don't know if i'm using the right word to basically I have my wallet with milk basket. Yeah. I deposit and then whenever I want something, I can finish it. Like today is a party and I might finish all my money in one go. Yeah. 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 Okay. Got it. Or I have it for a year, something coming yeah. every week or every day. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you can Very have it every day. You can have it every week. Uh, you can have it every month and it's yeah. your choice whenever you want to come to app and place an order. And when I said subscription, uh, we launched in November where we have said that we are a subscription only model, which means we have become like a prime or like a Netflix or a LinkedIn premium, uh, where we have put a flat charge on a monthly subscription. It has nothing to do with whether you order or not. It has nothing to do with anything. For you to use Milk Basket platform, you have to pay 69 rupees per month, and that's a flat charge. So you can compare it with saying that you're paying 129 for Amazon Prime or you're paying 200 for Netflix, now either what what one movie or 500 movies and yeah. overnight it's the same price right similarly at milk basket you can place one order or you can place 30 orders you can place for 5 rupees or you can place for 5000 or 50000 uh, but that's a flat subscription fee so now we are a subscription model because we have a subscription fee does that make sense yeah yeah i got it i got it i got it so yeah yeah but yeah, but technically, just not purely subscription. Now I yeah. now I understand what yeah. you're saying. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the milk models that you would see in India and around the world or subscription models are like, uh, I'll send you a dinner kit every two days. Right? That's that. like, for example, in 10 years ago, there was a, a startup called Diner, D-I-N-A. And a very, very famous meal kit startup. Uh, and that was meal subscription. Right. Or there's a meal subscription like every every day lunch. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll send it to you. So those are subscription where you have fixed quantity, fixed quality and you're, it's coming on a recurring basis. Uh, yeah. So we are on demand with, with the recurring order. That's how we look at it. Yeah. Yeah. But tell me something. Uh, and sorry for my ignorance, but you already were getting the wallet. You already, anyways, if I have to buy from you, then I have to put a certain amount of money and I can buy, you know, and I can uh, avail your uh, service. Why did you put the 69 rupees also? <laughs> uh, sustainability. <laughs> See, at some point of time, you realize that uh, you can only do so much and run so much with the free. So we don't have any delivery charge, right? So we never charge a customer for anything. Now, the thing is, are we creating enough value on the table? And if there's enough value on the table, the question is, are customers willing to pay for it? Uh, 
and uh, we believe that customer we are providing a value of 300 400 rupees per customer per month and we can start charging a small amount out of that to say that hey uh, you know this is the value that you are getting and uh, i think that's how it went went in uh, many customers said that 69 is too small we did loss one and a half approximately 1.8 percent of total customers uh, to say we don't want to pay membership or subscription charge which we have seen they have come back uh, after 30 days or 60 days because they realized that taking a car out costs you more <laughs> you know? yeah 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 and 15 minutes of my time spent in going to pick up uh, uh, the he or biscuit is is better to pay 70 or it's raining outside or it's heat outside or it's cold outside it's all about convenience and comfort why do you pay money uh, you know uh, and uh, i think uh, yeah 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 if you're creating I, value you have to extract value and that's a business for, for 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 you as a business to decide at what point of time what you can do and how you can do so a decision yeah, taken yeah. Uh, and i hindsight is always perfect so good decision <laughs> <laughs> Anand, now I'm going to take some learning out of you because you've been in the trenches building this and, and business and I, I feel from the outside this is a very difficult business because launching is easy but you've sustained it, now you've gone into this subscription also. Uh, <clears throat> tell me, what has been your understanding of the Indian consumer and the consumer you are serving? Because you know, there are so many theories that keeps coming we are value conscious we are uh, we don't like to pay subscription we want to stay away india doesn't pay what has been your understanding while building milk basket uh, i think understanding uh, always evolves uh, but most of the understanding that you evolve is more on more intricate level specific to your business like if you're in yeah. fashion, you would say what type of fashion sells and what does not Customer per se, if you're looking at consumer behavior, I think it remains constant. You cannot change it. You have to create a product that uh, that goes and sits in their routine, in their life, rather than the other way around. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of inertia that you would always face in changing. And you would be lucky if they change or, or you would be lucky to have a trial and then retain would be the, the holy grail. Right? So it's like education trial and retention uh, so trial itself is such a big problem retention is a holy uh, holy grail in itself uh, from a customer behavior uh, people want to pay no people don't want to pay uh, people would uh, people are always value conscious uh, they always want something at the cheapest possible price but there is a value for convenience uh, and uh, i think and this is what what we believe so we we have uh, specifically targeted certain sections of cities. So we are not a citywide phenomena. I don't know whether you know that uh, we... No, I didn't know that. Sorry. So, yeah. so we are live in Gurgaon for more than five years now. Gurgaon was our mm. home. Place. But uh, you could be living in Gurgaon and uh, we would not serve you. Mm. So we said we are a retailer. Uh, we are like a Subway. We are like a Starbucks. We are like a mom and pop shop. We know mm. which customer is going to come and uh, we would only serve these particular type of customers and we would only start our service there and you could be living next to that or you could be living half a kilometer away we would not come to you right a better example could be if i am a swimming pool a swimming pool is for certain people in a society who belong to that society or that community yeah right now and then depending on the demography i can choose Second thing that I have to say is that I think no matter which demography you pick in India, and we have picked a very small demography, maybe the top 20% population of a city, that's how we look at uh, on a very high level. No demographic, whichever demography you pick by sheer size of population that we have, and there's nothing wrong about it. We, we are the world's second largest, right? Becoming the world largest very soon. Uh, uh, I think there is enough meat in every segment, in every TG, in every small that, that you can become a multi, uh, not a unicorn, a decacon. Yeah. So uh, that's not an excuse that my customer segment is small. Means, for God's sake, you are not looking at a $60 million, sorry, $60 million population country like United Kingdom or, uh, you know, a $300 million, uh, 300 million company like uh, 
like a you uh, 300 million population like us you are looking at three times the us population in one third the area it's it's dense it's there even people who are rich or presumably rich upper middle class lives in clusters which are dense enough for you to make sense of supply chain yeah. Uh, you don't have to go to really, uh, you know, uh, different sections of the society to say, hey, everybody here lives in a farmhouse. Everybody has an acre of land. That's not happening here. Uh, we are we are by nature living in density. We are by nature, uh, you know, whether, whether we're rich or poor or middle class or upper middle class, lower middle class. Density is taken for granted because there is no area. So either vertically or horizontally, we are living together. Uh, and that's why retail can make sense in small areas and a small population can be very big for you uh, and uh, you know this is a slightly controversial we are in four cities but i believe if we would not have gone in four cities and just remain in one we would be bigger and better and still we would have been the same size if not bigger because it's not that gurgaon we have saturated gurgaon we hardly have any any presence till date yeah that that is you being humble also not really means that's a fact means i don't know we yeah. we capture maybe five percent of our tgs spent today not more than that you know all these decisions that you took and i'm assuming you took it as an entrepreneur along with your team you would have decided because these are not very standard decisions right and then of course there is outcome and you're building something uh surviving and thriving and growing so the, so the decisions are somewhere in some way working how easy or difficult it and i think it is easy but you have to tell is to convince the investors because you've got good investors uh, in your company how were you able to get them so uh, the decisions that you see today uh, shraddha are uh, are the outcome of those negotiations with those investors <laughs> which means going in those negotiations i cannot really disclose what was the real plan <laughs> 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 and the decisions that you see today are also uh, has the wisdom of those investors, you know, uh, clubbed <laughs> in. So I'm not saying that I'm only executing the plan that I decided. I think we have really got help from the wonderful set of investors, very intelligent, uh, very uh, pragmatic, uh, uh, a lot of exposure in the ecosystem within India, outside India, so that they can guide us. And the outcomes that you're seeing is a, is a mixture of what we went into the went on to the table with a plan and they said hey maybe tweak this maybe tweak that maybe drop this maybe pick it up uh, and arrived at a common consensus as a board to move forward uh -huh. so uh, i think that's how it works and that's this that's the beauty of it right uh, i am in day to day business i am too much in the business they are on the business in the business and on the business have to come together to move forward and that's the the best outcome most of the time. Yeah, no, you know, why I, Anant, I also asked you this is because uh, you rightly said that, right, even in small pockets, India is as big as, like, you know, Karnataka would be Germany, right? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. so, yeah, so, but because generally when you talk to investors when and then this is for all the entrepreneurs who will be watching right like when you go to investors they're always looking for big markets big opportunities big plans and what you are saying is that you're doing it in a structured way if correct me if i'm wrong so how easy it is to convince and what were some of the drivers which got your investors excited so uh Shraddha, i think that's a decision that you make before you bring an investor on board huh or you know have that that relationship so uh, i can proudly say that we were running out of money but we have rejected term sheets in the past where uh, where we just did not it did not make sense or uh, an investor will tell you if you can't uh, do what i ask you to do then we don't want to invest in you and i'm sorry uh, maybe there are founders who are willing to do that uh, yeah i'm willing to listen but it also comes with the fact that I did not start a startup when I was 20 year old. I did my startup <laughs> when I was 36, 37 year old. I have had 15 years of international corporate experience, 10 years outside India. I have advised boards and CEOs outside of Fortune 100, uh, FTSE 250 companies across Europe, across US. Uh, don't expect. You know, I have to tell you this, Anand, talking to you, no? I could yeah. sense it. 
I sense this thing that many people would be coming to you for advice because you have that thing about you that you know. Yeah, I had this thing. I'm not saying advice. I'm saying investors. We were on the topic of investors. What I'm saying yeah. is, uh, then you decide whether, uh, and investors have decided. Boss, you are too old. I'm not going to invest in you. That's great. Really? Yeah. And investors have said that uh, you have your own mind, so we don't want to invest in you. That's great. But what I'm saying is the investors that we have, uh, I think that's that's what they wanted in uh, in a founding team or a founder, and we wanted, and we could see that we can agree upon the fact, and we can together work on a on the best outcome together. If we can't yeah. work on the best outcome together, then I think that relationship has some problem from from initial days, and then it becomes a problem. Much bigger problem in the later days. The problem only multiplies. It doesn't add up, or it doesn't subtract, or disappear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you know, Anand, listening to you, what I'm getting is, and 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 of course, there are a lot of factors that come into it. But you were conscious. You were very, very conscious about what you wanted to do, how you wanted to do. Also, very open to feedback, and you were co very conscious in the process of whom you onboard as an investor. Trying to, yeah, we have tried to. We have done our own mistakes. We have, uh, you know, there have been things where investors said, uh, "Don't do this, don't do this." We said, "No, this is the right thing to do. This is the right thing to do." And uh, they would always come back and say, "I told you so." <laughs> <laughs> Some good opportunities yeah. you have to give them, no, once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Good or bad, and we don't know where it lasts, but it happens. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you know, you are you are flowing on your conviction. And uh, as one of my investors says that, uh, uh, and it, it always happens for a fundraise. It has happened with Milk Basket multiple times because we are in that ultra competitive environment that there is no way that you can talk about. Uh, means we are, we are the, the cockroaches of the, the grocery, grocery space, you know, all the way from the biggest families of India who have spent millions and billions for the last 10 years creating hypermarts across India and then the, the mega giants from outside who have come with collaboration with them uh, and all the all the Indian things that has happened and the Indian startups which have failed done again and again. So we are the cockroaches. Uh, we believe that industry is wide uh, and we are going to do mistakes and uh, we are going to figure it out. Uh, and I think uh, you mentioned about entrepreneurs for us. Uh, that's how we look at the team and we, we talk about it internally that uh, we are going to own up to the mistake that we have done and uh, we'll make sure we don't do it again. And uh, I can give you an example also, like we did a mistake last year, uh, you know, we were growing and growing and we were burning a lot of money. We said, keep growing and uh, if you keep growing, then you will get good funding. Uh, we Then we decided or we figured out, was not all right. And rather than you shutting down, it's better you use the left of the money to become profitable. And we mm -hmm. started on that path. And uh, in a very, very different from Shraddha, and this is very different to correlate, we were provided an opportunity to grow at a very, very fast pace over the last couple of months, you know, as mm -hmm. COVID strike. Mm -hmm. Because as COVID strike, everybody wants grocery and everybody wants online. There is nothing yeah. wrong in saying that the demand was on steroids. Mm -hmm. and it was not for us. It was for everyone. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the only thing I can say is that we decided that, hey, demand is there. And possibly we are the only player. And this might come as a shocker to you. We stopped new user onboarding on 27th of March. Why? The lockdown. Because the demand was so high that we could not even serve our own customers. for ah. Onboarding the new customers. We were stuck mm -hmm. with the supply. And we only opened it after 15th of May. So while we could have acquired 3x, 4x of the customers and we could have also served them, let's say, by hook or crook, by saying that, okay, I can only give you this and that. The conscious decision was uh, use, keep your loyal customers, keep the thought process. I know there are companies who have gone 3x, 4x, 5x in that time. But uh, to me, inflated, this is an inflated demand <clears throat> that we did last year by spending money. This year, it happened because of macros. Inflated demand always dies out. Inflated demands are not sustainable. Uh, so you you take the so last year learning told us this time that hey guys, let's hold on, let's keep serving our customer. 
there's enough demand within our customer base. We are on a path to profitability. As long as we follow that path, within that path, do whatever we can. Hmm. Let's not deviate, because uh, you can acquire a customer. You can uh, you can because right now customer wants everything, and it's June, and we are already seeing that those customers are are vanishing, not from us, from other portfolios or other. Because if I really want to go and pick up every tinda and every bindi that I want to buy, I would never buy online. The only reason I bought online is because the physical guy was not there. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the physical guy. I'm going running towards that guy. So. Yeah. You know, now if I would have served this customer, I could have spent a lot of money. I would have put a capex uh, on serving that customer, create a supply chain, hired people to do that, and what would happen now? Customer is out. You can't bring that customer back who wants to buy bindi and tinda physically. So. Uh, Identifying your customer is very important, and letting grow growth is also important. Yeah. So, so, yeah. And also, what and and the underlying thing also that I hear is that serving your customer, your core customer who's there with you, uh, and focusing on them is also very important. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know, uh, Anant, uh, this is also a learning exercise for me and for everyone who will be watching. You know, grocery startups or businesses not just startups businesses if i may say so are very tough very very tough <laughs> and i have in yeah. my last uh, so many years of you know seeing the the space i've seen so many come so many and sometimes it feels that sabko lagta hai ki ho jayega aur itne sare ek ek time tha matlab i don't want to name but kuch bhi name se bahut sare the but chale nahi aur chalta nahi hai uh, funding bhi itna hua hai chalta nahi hai why why do you think this place this space is so difficult and and why do you think this space uh, has still not seen uh, unicorns dedacorns what you are saying like like huge large outcome uh very difficult to answer shraddha i think i have tried to answer that question to investors also a uh, huh. lot of times uh i think it's a it's a combination of multiple factors a uh, few factors i can identify right now and huh. uh, think about uh, so uh, first of all i think a lot of innovation has not happened hmm. uh, people have tried to do the same thing uh, yeah. and and this happens because the demand when you see <clears throat> that there is almost like an infinite demand means you are looking at a 700 billion space in india of grocery right gurgaon city in itself spend more than a billion dollars in grocery on an annual basis wow right so a billion dollars spend of gurgaon which means you you take 20% 30% of it and you put a 3x number on it you become a unicorn just in gurgaon yeah yeah right uh, bangalore is 4x of gurgaon so bangalore spend is around 4 billion delhi would yeah. be around 10 billion uh 10 billion dollars of grocery being spent everybody is eating everybody is buying uh i think uh, so it's it's all the way from supply to sustainability and uh, to to progress uh that that sheer number of attempts that are made in grocery i think are are too much <laughs> why because everybody sees there is a demand yeah and why would people not buy uh and because the demand is so big uh a lot of innovation is not happening and people who are launching they are launching more of me too models yeah so uh, and it's very diff- difficult to differentiate also it's like yaar aata dal chawal ke andar how are you going to differentiate yeah right everybody is buying and everybody is selling uh, competition is huge you can uh, there is no barriers to entry so frankly speaking grocery industry is one of those that i compete with a person who has 10000 rupees and has uh, put a small stall and trying to sell eggs and bread and butter and with 10000 rupees you can start the business very easily uh all the way to a person who has 10 billion dollars and trying to figure it out what to do with that money and how to launch the biggest online grocery startup of india so you compete from 10000 to 10 billion competition is huge uh a big demand which prompts the supply that a lot of entrepreneurs try to uh, do it uh and overall it from outside it actually seems very easy to do 
Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because I didn't want to say this to you, but I just said that yeah, grocery startup shuru kar. <laughs> yeah, because see, I mean, it's a perception, right? Yeah. मतलब see when you try to get into a business, you say, what do I know about the business? And if I tell you about a grocery business, you will say, I know everything about the business. First of all, I am. Everybody is a consumer of grocery. Yeah. So it's not that I have not bought a bank. Uh, you know, I have never been to a bank. or i have not used a credit card or anything like that so everybody is a consumer now when everybody is a consumer uh, also automatically everybody becomes an expert uh so it's like i think uh, like everybody wants to own a restaurant right yeah i i wanted to and Me i too. Have not, i have not met people who don't want to own a restaurant yeah and owning a restaurant has nothing to do with the fact that i love food but that love food becomes owning a restaurant <laughs> so i i love fresh vegetables so i should always sell fresh vegetables online and within grocery let me deep dive there are more startups which try to solve fruits and vegetables as compared to atta dal chawal because they believe that there are so many problems in that kaisa pani hai kaisi khad hai kahan se aa raha hai and if i tell you that product is a uh, uh, you know it's like a uh, a diamond out of a coal mine then you, <laughs> you will pay the problem is people don't want to pay <laughs> so uh it's a uh, i call it uh, there's another phenomena at least in in within milk basket and any of the people that you talk to uh, within milk basket they will say anand uh, don't take this idea to anand and anand will say it's a fresh juice phenomena yeah okay so i'll explain to you what is a fresh juice phenomena go and ask 10 people If I give you freshly squeezed juice every morning, would you buy it or not? Obviously, that's the healthiest thing to do. Sell it to those ten people. I can tell you, they will drop out on the third day. Huge demand. Everybody wants it. Nobody wants to pay for it. Yeah. Because a hundred yeah. is fresh juice for three people is three hundred rupees multiplied by thirty. That's nine thousand rupees. That's forty to fifty percent of your total monthly spend. Yeah. a customer doesn't realize it when they are saying it that i want to buy it every day they only realize it when they have paid it for 3 days and fourth day the demand disappears yeah you know and we have i have seen so many of them uh come and go but they would come and go and people will always keep launching them organic fruits organic vegetables fresh juice yeah that because the demand is infinite and everybody wants to buy it yeah it is want to versus really do i think that's where the the disconnect comes yeah but you know you have anand managed to yeah and that's why i'm coming back to milk basket again and again because you to me you stand out because five years standing again i'm saying building this innovating and now like today in our conversation i've just get to know like i didn't know that you're operating in cluster you know in clusters uh, you have subscription you have on demand i You know, and I don't know if it's a secret, and you don't want to share. But are they? Uh, what are some of the plans that you have? Like, are you going to diversify? What What are some of the plans that you're thinking of to grow more? Ah, uh, uh, diversify. I don't know what does that mean. I think we. I you know you know what diversify means. <laughs> no, not really. See, diversify is a very big. Uh, It's it's like subscription. Uh. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know what it means because totally depends on. For you, diversification is we trying to sell an iPhone. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, can we sell an iPhone? Yes, we can sell an iPhone. Technically, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, are there better people who can do it better? I think that's that's true, and that's that's there. So we should not sell an iPhone. we can definitely supply those iphones after you buy it from someone and we can supply the cheapest and the best you mm. know we are a last mile so we are a, a last mile company we are a, a logistics and a technology company uh and i can say that possibly there are very very few players if there is any who understands uh supply chain and logistics the way we do uh and that's evident in our numbers in our cost in our fulfillment rate uh in our customer experience uh yeah. speaking. so uh is we don't have to say it we we supply you know uh 80000 liters of milk every day 
there is no single player in India who has been able to hand, handle 80,000 liters of milk uh, every day, where they own the entire supply chain from manufacturer to to the door. Yeah, and everything goes packed in a packet. It's not that they are just being dropped outside the door or thrown or stuff like that. Everything gets packed. So yeah, uh, so yeah. Uh, so just just to put things in perspective, we were interviewing a candidate from one of those uh, uh, Indian uh, e-commerce unicorns, and the guy visited our uh, hub, but what is our warehouse? And uh, I met him the next day, and I said, "How was the feeling?" And he said, uh, uh, "We only see that much rush twice a year. Uh, you know, there are two sales." <laughs> Uh, and I said, we do it 363 days because we only take off two days a year. <laughs> <laughs> so for us, uh, that's, that's the hustle and bustle we do. Uh, and uh, Yeah, well, listen, I want to ask you the first thing that you said when I asked you uh, from your lens, Milk Basket story. You said the DNA that we have. Right, and that the DNA and the people and the DNA that we have. Tell us what is this DNA? The DNA secret sauce. Uh, Shraddha, I think DNA is uh, DNA is what I think in a startup are those little decisions, yeah, which become policies, uh, which are created by people over a period of time, mm. and it's not necessarily uh, who I am and how I think. It could be a guy who's no longer in the organization, but uh, in that moment of time, he created a very customer-centric policy mm. or a customer-centric thought process. Mm. And that person moved on, but the company retained that policy or, or further developed on that policy to come up something better. Mm. I think that's DNA. So yeah. it's made over a period of time. Uh, it's, it cannot be copied. Uh, it could be uh, I I as a founder if I am if I say that I am thirty percent or forty percent of the DNA I think that would also be wrong because that means you as a founder are not doing the right job of hiring the right people for them to start thinking about it for them to create policies uh, you know it's the so from from customer it's uh, how you treat a customer how you respect a customer uh, uh, from employees it's also about you know uh, respect transparency, promise, what I'm hiring for, incentive plan and everything. Uh, but I think that's the DNA. Now, is it driven from the top? It is driven from the top. But you cannot be responsible for everything. You have to pass on that baton as yeah. multiple layers come under you. So uh, I can give you a very, very small example. I was interviewing a guy for uh, heading our, uh, uh, one of the functions for ops. Uh, mm. uh, and uh, the guy asked me, what, uh, you know, how does the company work? What is the DNA? What's the thought process? I said, uh, we have around 2,500 people, which is our entire ops workforce across four cities today. Uh, I don't have a problem if you don't pick up my phone because I'm not your stakeholder. I'll have a problem if you don't pick up a phone when one of these 2,500 people call you. Yeah. Those are your stakeholders. Because you and I do not matter. You are middle management. I am top management. And let's be very frank about it. I am very frank, typically with people. Like, who you, you are who you are and I am who I am. Yeah. But you and I only exist because this last mile delivery guy is taking a milk packet or an Ashirwad data or a bhindi or a payas to a customer. Right? So my two important stakeholders or the most important stakeholders become the customer who can decide not to buy from me and go to the shop. And if they decide to do that, then you and I don't exist. Second is this person puts, a, puts, a, puts an order and this guy's decide not to deliver. Mm. And then also you and I go to home. I was <laughs> that because of these people. <laughs> true, very true. Very so to true. Me, that's the DNA. Now yeah. I have no idea whether there is a founder who, uh, or a CEO who, who talks about uh, so, something like that at a middle management person who would be paid, let's say, 30, 40 lakh rupees on an annual basis to say, Ki boss, the guy who's making 15,000 rupees on a monthly basis, you better answer the phone. Otherwise, that would create a problem for me. Yeah. I think that's, that's a very small, minuscule part of the DNA on which we are saying we are hiring people. And we're telling people upfront that this is what you expect when you come in this company. Yeah. 
yeah yeah that that flows through and i think when this person hires and if you decide the, to bring this person on board this person know where the priority is so the next time they will create an incentive plan or an attendance plan or a roster or something like that depending on the function they would keep that stakeholder perspective in mind and that would become a part of the dna over a period of time yeah yeah you know but what reeks through all this is an extreme sense of authenticity in everything like in everything right like and 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 yeah yeah that's yeah, but, how you build you know that companies. makes the life so easy yeah uh, authenticity makes the life so easy because yeah. then you can empower people and uh, then you can tell people that hey you created this policy uh, would you have created this policy if your son would be employed with us yeah or if your brother is employed with us and yeah. if the policy is right for your son and your brother or your sister then the policy is right for the employee yeah uh, and that gives so much freedom and empowerment for everyone to say that all we have to think about is what is right for human yeah at at, at overall and then you don't have to micromanage so and the only thing i think you can do as a leader possibly is to say don't micromanage if you yeah. can create an organization without micromanagement the organization would strive and thrive on its own and that's what was so apparent over the last couple of months that no travel is happening nothing is people are who where people are <clears throat> people are in bareilly people are in lucknow right and uh, we have grown 2x uh, yeah can you imagine that it's just because they are taking the decisions because a simple guideline is there to do the right thing yeah keep doing the right thing for the customers employees will take care of customers and uh, organization will take care of employees and uh, stakeholders and investors will keep getting money because everything is working beautifully <laughs> <laughs> yeah and 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 at the heart of it is that sab sahi kaam kar rahe sab sahi jo karna hai sahi hai wahi karna yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. you know anand uh, i think uh, uh, i have asked you a lot of questions and i can go on and i think we should do this as multiple series because i have now found in you someone with whom one can have a extreme deep level of conversation <laughs> tell me tell me if i have to ask you what has these last 5 years meant you know you have worked abroad you've done so many things you did, as you said you didn't start with you know rosy eyed the 20 year old from college अब मगर ये ऑन्टरप्रेनरशिप पांच साल करके अगर मुझे पूछना है आज अनंत 2015 से 2020 में व्हाट हैज दिस फाइव इयर्स मेंट टू यू एज समवन हु स्टार्टेड मिल्क बास्केट डेफिनेटली नथिंग दैट आई इमेजिन आई वुड आई थिंक इट हैज बीन अ मच मच डिफिकल्ट जर्नी इन Five years ago, if you would have told me, I would have to do so much. <laughs> five years, I would have gone and joined back as a partner or a country head in some organization. High five! All entrepreneurs will give high five on this. And uh, you know, take a multi-crore <laughs> package, which I had seven years ago. I have not seen that salary again. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's almost to say it's sweat, it's blood that people don't see. uh yeah. it's a sacrifice a huge huge sacrifice on the family yeah uh, seeing kids only on a sunday basically for few hours uh for five years seeing them just grow horizontally vertically you don't see them yeah uh and uh, you know a, a lot of things are very very difficult to do uh decisions that have been made cannot think about those decisions people who joined could not foresee that oh we need such people and you know we have been lucky with the type of talent we have a uh, few people that uh, that have gone away to say hey when i am hiring this guy this guy would stay with me for 10 years or 15 years uh, as the guys as long as company is growing and realizing why that person would leave uh, it's just unimaginable uh, very very difficult to explain and you meet and talk to so many founders all i can say is that i think you know the best it's one of those things that you can't explain uh, you experience through it uh, you burn through it you live through it and uh, you will come out minted in a very very different form yeah uh, and uh, yeah the only i don't know uh, oh, but you won't have you won't have it in any other way 
you will ha- still go if i have to say will you do the last 5 years again like the same way or would you like to change would you say that you're okay with the last 5 uh, years it's a last 5 years would i change it uh, i don't know uh, the answer cannot be a plain yes or no here yeah I yeah think yeah, yeah. Certain decisions that i would like to go back and change if i can uh i also believe in that theory that you are what you are because of what you did yeah right so uh and those decisions would i would have taken in hindsight could have resulted in something else maybe yes maybe no we don't know so uh you know happy and contented to where we are uh how we are doing uh the respect the love that we get uh for being such a small like we are a very very small player but just the no. type of love that we get and uh, you know uh, some uh, customer who just write to us about some things in their life and attributed to milk basket that just changes your life uh, never imagined that for example so uh, while we are at it a customer uh, wrote to us 2 years ago and this is a 2 year old anecdote i remember uh, where she said that i have got the best employee of the year year award thanks to milk basket and you were like <laughs> how can you thank milk basket for an employee of the year year award uh, and this is a customer not not an employee uh, i actually thought that somebody wrote wrote by mistake to us <laughs> must be right to someone and uh, on a wrong address so we called the customer and you know she has done a calculation which we never realized she said that on a weekly basis i have spent uh, i have saved around 9 hours wow uh on a on on a weekly basis 9 hours which i would have spent going out thinking about groceries this and that fulfilling the need i was able to divide those 9 hours into two equal buckets 4 and a half and 4 and a half so i was able to spend extra 4 and a half hours with my kids and i was able to spend extra 4 and a half hours on my work and i believe yeah. consistent 4 and a half hour work over multiple weeks over multiple months that i have been using this basket resulted in me being the employee of the year wow you know what uh, okay i would not trade that for anything else yeah something that you cannot trade for wow proper impact in someone's life uh, by doing what we are doing we have not done anything extraordinary and a customer is paying for what they are paying it's just i think we believe in convenience and we have created that that space yeah and there goes there are so many people who would not care about 7 hours in a week it's like 7 hours in a week i would we are uh, you know money money poor and time rich yeah so for them they would not use milk basket and they are not paying subscription fees today and they still say why is charging 70 rupees a month and then on the other hand there would be a customer who would say ki boss 200 rupees le lo but service ban mat kar de <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah yeah wow anand i have so thoroughly enjoyed and learned and 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 a lot of you know genuinely i'm saying this lot of respect for you hum word use karte hain na trenches mein reh ke fight karna aur khade rehna i i feel that you are in the trenches and you're talking to me from there thank you i really really uh, 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 thank you for all that you shared and and with so, so much of authenticity thank you thanks a lot it's a pleasure thank you shraddha for asking the right questions uh <laughs> i am going to keep asking you and we will have regular conversation you have lot to share and we'll get you to talk a lot more thank always, you always ready thank you so much for your time thank, thank you, you.